It does not get much bigger than this in Edinburgh. Derby Day is etched into everyone's diaries the moment the fixtures are released. And yes, it does take on a different dynamic this season, both teams fighting to get out of the championship, but in some ways that makes the rivalry all the more engaging. There are a thousand storylines on a match like this, and the backdrop is not too bad either. A city filled with natural beauty, a rich history, it's our capital. Above the crags that fade in gloom starts the bare knee of Arthur's seat. Ridged high against the evening bloom, the old town rises street on street. With lamps bejeweled straight ahead, like rampard walls the houses lean, all spired and domed and turreted sheer to the valley's darkling green. Ranged in mysterious disarray, the castle, menacing and austere, looms through the lingering last of day. And in the silver dusk you hear, reverberated from crag and scar, bold bugles blowing points of war. The battle resumes today in Leith. Hearts have made the short journey across the city. From Gorgie, it's less than four miles for their fans. And on the way, they'll no doubt reminisce about their recent trips to Easter Road. They have an extraordinary record here. The Jambos arrive as the form team in the championship. They are the only undefeated league side in the country. And their lead is now six points. After yesterday, Rangers won 3-0 at Dumbarton. Hibs are in fifth place, remarkably already 14 points adrift of their Edinburgh rivals, a gap they really need to start eating into today. This Scotland manager, Gordon Strachan, is with us today. He grew up watching these derbies. Gary McAllister, former Scotland captain, is here as usual as well. We'll chat about the game and Scotland, if we may, in just a few seconds. But first of all, the all-important team news with Derek Gray. And he's with a man who played for both Hearts and Hibs. Yes, thanks, Daryl. You're talking, of course, about a proud Edinburgh man as well, in Michael Stewart. He knows more than most about the cut and thrust of these derbies. Let's get to it. Let's have a look at the two teams, beginning with Hibernian. There is one change on the side that thrashed Livingston. It's in defence with Liam Fontaine playing from the outset. Callum Booth drops out of the team. Hearts have made a change as well. Danny Wilson, the skipper, will be in the middle of their defence. Jordan McGee is the odd man out. Michael, what will these changes do to the way the teams play? Will things switch around at all? No, I think it'll be a bit of continuity. I think you know to be expected somebody like Danny Wilson, the captain, coming back in and looking to strengthen up the back line for for uh, for Hearts, and, and similarly with Fontaine for for Hibs. Obviously, Callum Booth's not an out and out centre half, but I think the interesting thing in this game is that you know Hibs are playing quite a narrow midfield. They don't have real width there, and Hearts they've got lots of width. So it's a case of. Maybe if somebody can get the foothold and the, you know, the, the upper hand in that wide area, that might well be the key to winning the game. If the Hearts wide guys can have a free run at the fullbacks, they could uh, you know, really cause a threat for Hibs. Hibs have flirted with three at the back in certain matches, but they don't have enough defenders at the moment with Jordan Forster out. No, they don't. Uh, you know, as we were just saying there, obviously Callum Booth's not an out-and-out centre-half. Fontaine comes back in and you know, four at the back is really the only thing that they can, they can look at doing. But you know, it was successful last week against Livingston, so I think you know, there's a bit of confidence, there's a bit of momentum building up at Hibs, but this game here today is massive for them to try and you know, make sure that they can continue that and then on the flip side for Hearts it's another test to see if they can continue this fine form that they've had this season All right Michael we look forward to your comments as the day progresses for the moment Daryl back to you Yep Michael will be up here shortly he's played in 17 derbies knows a thing or two about this game Gorn you grew up watching these born in Muir House of course really just along the road you must have some special memories of these games Yeah that was it I used to stand just down there it used to be the cow shed and uh if you asked me to name a team in 1970, I could do it like that. If you asked me today's team, I would have problems. You can if you want. <laughs> yeah, I'd have problems. <laughs> and I, I came from my first game here with my father, and uh, I took my father to his last game here as well, uh, about five weeks before he died, and it was a, a Hibs Hearts game. So it's, it's a big place and uh, the memories of the Strachan family, yeah. And you saw some fantastic players. Oh, listen, I've I seen some great players. Hearts had uh, Jim Crook, Shank and Donald Ford, that's all I can remember. Um, but Hibs, uh, fantastic. My, my hero, it was, was Cormac, Gordon, Jimmy Rook, Alec Cropley, Shadler. There were so many great players, but my hero was Pat Stanton. 
Um, I tried to base myself on Pat Stan was at school, but that was never <laughs> going to work because you know fine well he was good looking, elegant, and fantastic. Tanned. So tanned as well, I did tan. Everything that I didn't have, he had. And matter of fact, he's still like that now. I'm still jealous of the fella. But uh, and funny enough, I ended up, he was assistant manager at Aberdeen when I was there. And from being my hero, he actually helped me a lot because I was going through a bad time at Aberdeen at the time and he was, he was great. Um, he, he helped me out a lot when I was at Aberdeen. So I've got a lot to thank from not only as a supporter watching him, but as a, as a person when I was growing up through the football world. Don't do yourself down, the tan's not bad. Uh, Gary, <laughs> you were reintroduced to the derby last season, of course, and we saw some fantastic matches. Great storylines as well, when you think the day Hibs could have put hearts yes. down and the way they fought that off yeah, and it just went on again. Not only reintroduced, I'd never beaten uh, an Edinburgh derby. You know, I just loved the intensity of the games. And like all derbies, it's the fans that make it such a great occasion. You know, the building up to the game, you know, in the workplace, you know, in the pubs and clubs. I was really impressed with the intensity of the games and the level, the quality of both teams. But obviously Hearts did have the upper hand last season. I just felt, because of their plight last year, they just, they, 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 they had a more relaxed look about them, where there was pressure. You could feel pressure here at Easter Road. I was you know, with, with, with the fact, you know, change of managers, yeah. they were drifting closer to relegation. They couldn't stop, could they? They couldn't stop that. No. They were on a slippery slope, Hibs. And you thought it was going to finish that day. That was the day it was going to make them safe. But it just got worse and worse. And I said, as Gary said, Hearts had no pressure at that point. But Gordon, you'll agree. I think, I think in games like this, it's the teams that can actually play with no fear. You, you can't go into a derby match, any derby match, worrying about making mistakes. You've just got to be positive and think, think like that. Play with no fear. The other, the other thing is about this game is, I think the people that keeps their composure mm -hmm. and don't get emotional, because the team that gets emotional first usually yeah. loses. That's when they get somebody sent up, because the players want to play at the crowd and stick a big tackle in, and the crowd go, yes, but they, you can put them under pressure. It's a really big game for both teams, but is it even bigger for Hibs, given the gap already? We saw 14 points between the two teams already at this stage of the season. It's an awful lot, Gordon. Well, we're probably saying that if, if they don't win today, then you would say Hearts. Was it 17 points ahead then? It would be. 17 lost. Yeah. That's, a, that's a long, long that's a, it's a lot of points, hard to get back. At the end of any title hole. Got, yeah. yeah, my feeling would be Hibs aren't looking at Hearts. I think Hibs' is target now, you know, they've had a slow start. I think they'll be, you know, I think Stubbs has mentioned it this week. He'll be looking to get in the playoffs at all costs. He said, he said actually he's guaranteeing the playoffs, yes. which is a big statement, although, of course, yeah. fourth is getting into the playoffs. Let's just draw a line under the game for now because while you're here, if you don't mind, I'd like to talk about Scotland in it. And I should say, well done, congratulations. You've got us all living in belief and enjoying watching the national team again. Well, I mean, those were two great games, weren't they? I think over the last year, the players have performed. That's the most important thing. The result sometimes, there's nothing you can do about that. You can be unfortunate at times, but all you can do as a football man and as, um, as manager is ask them to train well, work well together and then perform and, and you ask them for a performance they give you that performance that's all you can ask and, and the, the players at this moment in time would like a few more points that's obvious yeah. um, but there's, there's nothing we can do with results like you know Poland beating Germany yeah. and things like that all we can do is put on a performance but the overriding thing done. Gordon is people are people for me you know looking from the outside and people are playing me a smile on face they look as if they're actually enjoying every time well, we they, every time we join up as a, as a group they're looking forward to the next game you know and Obviously, that comes with the fact that they've had good performances and good results. And, what, and, but what, results could just have been a wee bit better, couldn't they? But what, you don't, see, what, don't, what you don't see is the time and the amount of time that these players put into it. Because it's not easy. Because remember, these players, the guys, are they don't turn up for the money. They don't no, turn up for bonuses. No. They turn up because they want to play. And then right. you say to them, right, we're, we're training twice a day. You know, But they love it. They, and and they've, they've really bought into it. What, what I liked about the, the Georgia game is we practiced for four days to play against three centre-backs. Then within a minute we knew it wasn't three centre-backs. And we said, OK, we go back to that, the default kind of way we play. And they went back into that yeah. within minutes. and got. Good. That's the most pleasing thing that's happened over the last year. Those next two games are going to be absolutely fantastic. Republic of Ireland and England, both at Celtic Park, we're looking forward to them. OK, of course, this is the second Edinburgh derby of the season. Hearts won the first and there was no shortage of drama. A new league, but the same passionate Edinburgh derby. Right stop by Hibernian. Hadley turned around there. Penalty. Liam Craig. Oh, he's missed it. Sam Nicholson, confident youngster. It's a belter. Hearts in front. Grabbin. Penalty to Hearts this time. And Robertson sees red. It's Flavin, it's two. Hearts on a victory course. 
Osman So has joined the Red Card Club. El Anagi, but too late for him. Our next offering from Scotland in BT Sport comes on Friday night, October the 31st, Halloween, from the Premiership at St Johnson against Motherwell, Friday, 7.30pm on BT Sport 1. Now we're building up to the second Edinburgh derby of the season. Live on BT Sport from Easter Road, kick-off is 12.15. Brace yourself for a little bit more drama. These are the team news headlines today. One change for Hibs. Liam Fontaine has been past fit. Callum Booth onto the bench. Jason Cummings starts to looking for his first derby goal against the team he supported as a kid. One change for Hearts as well. Danny Wilson, the captain, is back in. Jordan McGee onto the bench. And up front, no surprise here, Osman Sol plays two. He's the joint top scorer in the championship. Right, last summer, Hearts decided to go on a different managerial route under the new ownership of Anne Budge. So out went Gary Locke, in came Robbie Nielsen. It did raise a few eyebrows, but the young coach is proving his worth. I think he's, a, he's an ideal candidate to, to move into the managerial role and he's obviously taken to it very well so far. He says to us that if we put in the work and buy into what he's doing, then we will improve. And I think that's what everyone's doing, and everyone has improved from it. He's always very cool, calm and collected when he played. I think he's got that across to the players already. Yeah, he's a brilliant manager, and he's speaking with the players and working hard, and he helps me bring out my game. He's always one that would take things in and, and talk rationally about them. I mean, he was never somebody that would go shouting around the dressing room, pointing fingers. You're a young coach starting out, in the game, but you're, you're making it look easy. No, it's not easy at all. You know, I'm, I'm very lucky in the situation I'm in. With, you know, I've got some fantastic players here. You know, not just fantastic ability, but fantastic attitude as well. You know, they want to work hard, they want to do well, and it's, it's made my life very easy. We, we work them hard during the week, and there's never any complaints. You know, I know that winning games breeds confidence, and there's a lot of spirit in the dressing room. You know, there's confidence of all young guys and they're eager to do well. You know, and they, they work hard every day, and they're, they're getting the rewards at the moment in the games. In the top of the league, is that something you'd have expected at this stage? It's something I'd hoped. You know, you can never expect anything, really, you know, because you can't influence other teams' performances. We can only influence our own. And we have, uh, we've had a good start, but still a long way to go. You know, it's uh, just over a quarter of the way through the season. You know, we've, uh, we've managed to have a good start, but we have to maintain that. What kind of challenges do you face day to day as a as a young coach? It's very time consuming. I don't see a lot of my family, you know, I spend a lot of time away, you know, in, in the academy or at games, so that can be difficult, but, you know, it's a sacrifice you have to make. The other side of it is, you know, time management can be difficult as well, you know, deciding exactly what you want to focus on, and, you know, I've been spending a lot of time recently trying to delegate a lot of things to, to the staff and, you know, try and free up time for the things that are really important you know, for the game on a Saturday. You've got Craig Levine in a, an upstairs role as well at the club, is he good to lean on? Yeah, Craig's been fantastic, you know, he's been great to speak to and, you know, spend a lot of time with them, talking about ideas and, and things that we want to do at the, the football club, not just with the, the first team, but also right away down at the junior academy. You know, I spend a lot of time. Just TV, myself, Craig, and Jack were here on Sunday, you know, watching the, the 15s and the 17s play, and we spend a lot of time with them. You know, I know all the guys that are coming through all the age groups now, and there's a real togetherness about the club. You know, there's real stability now about the club, and we've got a direction. You know, I think we're a wee bit. For a, for a few years, and uh, now we've got that direction, and it's, you know, it's still going to be difficult. You know, it's still a long way to go, but you know, at least we've got a, an idea of where we want to go and a real vision. You know, we're trying to do things right. You know, we're trying to you know, recruit properly and, and, and push the club in the right direction. And you know, if you continue to work hard, then the success will come. It's very much a team at Hearts at the moment. You know, we all know that. You know, you might be playing for 90 minutes, you might play for two minutes, or you might not even be involved at all, but. It's a togetherness and you know, we all understand that. Mark Guidi reporting there. As you can see, Michael Stewart has rejoined us now. Gary off to prepare for his commentary duties. And Michael, interesting because you were quite critical of the previous regime and a supporter of some change at the club. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that when I looked last season at what Hearts were capable of, I know that obviously there was a transfer embargo and there was a lot of 
you know, crap going on off the pitch. It was difficult to deal with, but I still thought that the, the players that they had they were capable of more. And I think obviously, you know, this season they've managed to bring in good players, but also complement the youngsters that are there, and they've found that right balance. And Robbie Nielsen has done very well, off to a good start at the beginning of the season too, but he seems diligent, obviously working very hard, and he's got Craig Levine there above him, a bit of experience as well there. Well, it's working out, you know, but, and I think what you get the grumblings mostly for the fans, um, but fans, they really know what's the best for a football club. You can ask the West Ham fans, what do they think now? Last year they've got banners up and everything, so that's why... You know, people have to stand firm and say this is the direction we're going in and we don't deviate from that no matter what goes on it's not it's not it's not a clear ride it's even with the management game um, it started off fantastically well putting in the hours of what but it's not always like this you know he'll know fine well what, what he thinks about management it's like Stuart McCall Stuart McCall's been the best manager in Scotland for the last two years then suddenly he comes under pressure why he's still a good manager but these are the times that will test you but what he's done so far has been absolutely fantastic because we all expected probably Rangers to run away with it, Hibs to be there and Hearts to pro get over this kind of turmoil that's been behind the scenes and having Craig Levine there in, in a position that says I'm here for a while then the coach can feel safe and that breeds confidence through the players now the players know there's something behind them we can listen to this man because you've got to be here for a couple of years when we'll put the whole lot into it I talked about the hard work the, the players say triple training sessions some days they're certainly at the training ground an awful lot more it seems yeah, well, I mean, the, the big thing here is that, you know, fans and punters, they, they, they always look at footballers and think they're lazy and they don't do enough work. You can't physically... Who thinks that, Michael? You can't physically run around from nine till five. So it's about, you know, working the brain as well, and that's what Robbie's doing. It's not just physical work. It's doing video analysis. It's tactical work. All the other things that you need to do to get a proper football team in place, and, and that's obviously paying off in the, the pitch as well. And one man has been absolutely key to the success story so far is the striker Osman So, a man Stephen Cragen has been watching very closely. Thanks very much, Dale. Yes, I think when Robbie Nielsen took over the job in the summer, he knew he had to strengthen the squad, but I think even he'll be surprised at the impact Osman So has made. He was a little bit unknown. You know, he'd played in Moldova, he'd played in Sweden, but eight goals in his opening 12 games is a terrific return. And, you know, Robbie Nielsen will hope he can continue that through the rest of the season. I think you just look at the attributes that he has. You know, this is earlier in the season against Rangers, and for me, this set the tone, not just for him so far, but for Hearts. You know, Rangers equalise, but within minutes, so drives through, using his pace, using his physical presence, getting a crucial goal. But this is him at his best. You know, you look at strikers and you judge them on goals, you judge them in, in the 18-yard box, getting across players. That's what he does very well. He's got an appetite for the game. He's got an appetite to get across people to cause problems. And you look at teams who are successful, teams who gain promotion, more often than not, they have a striker who scores goals on a regular basis. And Robbie Nielsen may just have found his man. Nicely done, Stephen. When you look at some of those clips, you can see he's got quality in a lot of different areas in his game. Yeah, I seen him last year, gangly, didn't look to have much power. Um, so I thought, yeah, he's something in the making. But I think he's got this stage now where he, where he knows what he's good at. You, you can define, he defines it, with, especially the taller guys, what they're good at, what they can't do. And obviously that first goal of the season, looked like it went, right, I know what I'm good at now, I'll work at this, and I'll work hard at what I'm good at. And, and that's what he's doing. I think gangly guys like him and Tolga take a lot longer to understand what their body can or cannot do. He's got a lot of good players around him, and it's interesting how they piece together the young players from last season with a bit more experience, and good young Scottish players like Billy King, who scored in the derby last season, Sam Nicholson as well. They're helping from the wide areas. Oh, they are, there's no doubt about it. I think that, um, as I said, you know, last season there was a lot of youngsters and they maybe lacked that experience. Now they've brought in a few more experienced players that's helped those youngsters, and as you said, those two guys in the wide areas, Nicholson and King, are real threats. Yeah, you know, Billy can I remember speaking to Robbie a lot last season. He said he's a real confidence player. He's a youngster, he needs an arm around the shoulder. He needs to somebody to believe in him. And, you know, looking at his performances this year, you can tell that he's full of confidence. Sam Nicholson as well. He's a, a real talented player, somebody that no doubt Gordon maybe will be looking at in a couple of years' time. Maybe in the future, absolutely. They played very well in the derbies last season. OK, next up, we will focus on Hibs and their new manager, Alan Stubbs, who's trying to forge a new style of play on the club. Not long to go now, 15 minutes or so until kickoff in the Edinburgh Derby. Fans are making their way into Easter Road. They're coming in numbers, they're coming in hope. Perhaps even fear, this is a game you dare not lose. 
Now, Hibs have been showing signs of life under the new manager, Alan Stubbs, in recent weeks. It was never going to be easy to turn things around on Leith, but gradually he's forging a new style of play that the fans can identify with. There's been a lot of things gone on at the football club over the years. Rightly or wrongly, we need to move on, you know, and sometimes, you know, we can't do anything about the past, but we can do something about the future. I'm speaking to a lot of my friends who are Hib supporters, they are patient because they know there is, there is improvement and, and it's not helped with Hearts having such a good start in the league. That never helps when your rivals are 14 points clear. But I think they do see it uh, game by game. They, they can see what the managers try to do. I've always said all along it was never going to be giant steps. I feel as if, you know, over the past few weeks, even though we haven't necessarily got the results that we that we deserved. They're making good steps in the right direction. And everyone's behind the manager. All the playing staff are we're enjoying it. You know, coming every day, looking forward to training and you know, looking forward to the games. You can see like a change in the style for last season. Um, the team are looking more coherent, controlling games more, but uh, the frustrating thing is they don't get the results to go with it. Over the last five or six years I don't think at home the record's been great at all. Which is something that you need to change, I think the, the fans would be much happier obviously have a good home record than, than away, but no, I think gradually it's, it is getting better this season. The crowd I don't really have that connection with the players at the moment, so I think there probably is something in that, that the players are a little bit fearful of really expressing themselves at Easter Road. People seem to judge me on, or judge the team on, our home form from last season. I wasn't here last season. You know, some of them players were in here last season. You know, the way I look at it is that we've lost one home game. And McGibbon, that's what Hibs needed. A shot in the arm, Jordan Forster. The fans are, are, are concerned with the home form. There's not, there's not a better game to, to turn that around than when you're old rivals. It's difficult to say it's just another game when it's a derby. You know, because sometimes it, it can be taken out of context. It's a huge game and I appreciate totally how much it means to the fans. It'd be a great time for the Hibs players to, to stand up and be counted and, and go on and put a really good performance, get a, a good result, get the fans who, who, are, who are behind the manager, get them even more behind the, the manager and his plans for the way he's trying to take the club forward. Uh, and, that, and that could be this weekend. Everybody's derby is, is the most important game in their fans' eyes. And that'll be the same on, on Sunday. You know, it'll be no different whatsoever. Uh, there'll be two sets of fans coming to the game with one thought on the mind, and that's to, to win the game and go home with the Bradham Lights. He speaks very well, he seems level-headed, and if you look at his time at Everton, working under coaches like David Moyes, Roberto Martinez as well, it's a good apprenticeship, if you like. I think it's terrific that you can, you can start as a, as a youth team coach, because you can play with shapes and, and, and formations, and then you understand when you use them, when you don't use them, when you want to change, what formation's best that you like working under. But then you, you come away with it and you come to this level, and say you say you work under Martinez. But you can't really say, I want you to play like Everton now, I, don't, I want you to play like McCarthy, you to play like McCarthy, and I want you, who's just come from Tonette Juniors, to play like Lukaku. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. What he's done is, he's looked at the youth system, then he'll have a look at the players he's got here, and say, what's the best system to suit the players I've got here? Over the last uh, couple of months, he's brought in new players, and he might, because of that, tinker away system. And it'll take a wee while to get it. But I think it's a good idea to start at that level. I was in Fox, I got chucked in English Premiership, win games, and make your mistakes in front of 60,000 people. But I think he started off brilliantly, and he's had a good group of people around him who is a, a, as a listening board, and he can listen to them. But when you get to this position, you're your own man. You have to be what you are. And you're absolutely right because he has changed the shape, the style of play in recent times, gone between a back three or a back five, whatever you like, to a back four. Yes, it's quite led by personnel and injuries, but he's trying to find the best style. Yeah, well, he is. I mean, listen, the thing, you know, with Hibs, Darrell, is that things have needed to change. You know, there's been a lethargy, there's a negativity about the place, and he's got to be flexible. He's obviously, as Gordon said there, there's been a turnover of players yet again, but I think the guys that have come in are a stronger character than we heard before. And he's, you know, he's got to try and find what's best for them. Obviously today and yet the last week, he's gone with a bit more of a narrow midfield. And I'm interested to see how that's going to match up today. Because as I said earlier, Hearts are very strong in the wide areas. And I think, you know, whoever gets a foothold in that area, rather than, you know, traditionally the middle of the park, could get, uh, you know, the benefit of that and win the game. Well, on the middle of the park, I believe Stephen Craig has picked out a key man.
man for Hibs there. I have indeed, Dallin. Scott Allen, and I think if you look at Scott Allen's career, it probably hasn't progressed the way he hoped it would. You know, two years ago he left Dundee United, you know, went down to West Brom, and he probably hoped he'd make the level down there, but he's back, he's had four loans, he's back now at Hibs, he's trying to reinvent himself, and I think if you look at his recent performances, he's been terrific, he's been the driving force for Hibs, he wants the ball, he tries to make things happen, but he knows he's up against two experienced players in Gomez and Boabin this afternoon, he's going to have to try and get the better of them. And Stephen, you've seen a lot of Hibs recently. You were at Livingston last week when they had a really good performance. I know the system has changed a bit, but looking at last week, what did you notice? Well, it's exactly what Michael's saying. I thought they played a very narrow midfield. And I was a little bit concerned. You're going into the derby today, but hearts are strong and wide areas. You see the midfield three, Dial, just a little bit narrow, leaving lots of space, particularly down the opposition's left-hand side. And I think when you haven't got the biggest centre-halves, you haven't got the most aggressive centre-halves, you can't allow easy crosses to come into the box. You know, there's two ways of doing it. You either have to stop the supply going wide or you have to try and stop the crosses coming into the box. It's Dylan McGeek again. I think just getting attracted inside for some reason, I think they have to be more aware. You know, whether it's tactics, whether it's just individual stuff, I'm not so sure. But if Hearts get these chances, whether it's on the right-hand side with Parrish and the left-hand side with Hickersley, they'll cause all sorts of problems. This is probably the most concerning one for me. They've got seven or eight players and one half of the pitch. It's one pass and suddenly seven or eight players are out of position. But if you just look at the back post, Lewis Stevenson isn't the tallest fullback. You look at So, El Hassanui, they'll be looking to capitalise on that. So, Hibs will have to be crucial, they'll have to work hard, they'll have to stop the crosses to try and get three points. Stephen, thank you. And it's interesting because it's been very attacking for Hibs, as we said. Danny Handling at the top of a diamond recently, we think, with Malonga. And Jason Cummings, I wanted to talk about because he was playing amateur football at Hutchie Vale about 18 months ago. And he does say some things in post-match interviews, like, I've got a touch of an angel. And I was reading some good quotes from him this morning. He lives in Gorgi with his mum. He's a big Hearts fan, released by Hearts a couple of years back. And it disappointed him. He wants to score against him. And he doesn't score goals. He hits them in with a zing. And if you're wondering about the zing, this is a quote from him this morning. It's actually a tattoo he's got. And he said, I, I've got a zing on my left foot. I got it two years ago when I was in Aya Napa with the boys. I woke up. I couldn't remember what had happened the last night. I'd, I'd had a few tinnies and I woke up and I thought, wow, how did I get that? To me, there must be some sort of thing to do here. I remember Celtic played here and Rankin scored a goal against Celtic for about 40 yards and, and he, and he caught... Squiggler. A squiggler. <laughs> I just thought the goalkeeper was useless. I thought it was a rotten shot where... But the goalie was useless. It might Big as well. Yeah, and then he seemed to affect Boric, but it wasn't a squiggler, it was just a rotten goalie he was in that day. Who is, is brilliant for us, but that day he was rotten. But it was great. He's a fantastic kid. He doesn't seem to be being, doing any harm to anybody. He's not abusing anybody. And he, he he's says just he's having a laugh at himself. He says absolutely serious in the pitch, but he likes to have a bit of fun off it. He says there's nothing wrong with that. There's, is there's there? nothing wrong with that. I, I, I like to coach with a smile on my face and a bit of a laugh. But I'm serious. I don't take myself serious, but I take what I'm doing serious. He certainly has a great touch at times and he can score good goals like we saw at Ibrox against Rangers when he was man of the match. Yeah, I mean, his left foot is, you know, he's got a very, very good left foot and he's got a, a nice touch. Is that the angel touch, touch the left foot? The angel right, touch, the right foot, what is that? I it was, it was the right foot. out of the air, was it the left? Oh, right, he scored okay. it with the left, but anyway, yeah. it was a good touch. But he has got a good touch and he's got, a, you know, he's got a good left foot and he can strike it well. A little bit like Griffiths in terms of, you know, he can, you know, pop it from anywhere and he's invariably finds the, the target and puts the goalkeeper under pressure. So, you know, he's that sort of player that can drift in out of games a lot of the game can pass him by, but he can he can pop up with something. Right, we've already heard from both of the managers in depth. That was earlier in the week, the cam of the training ground. I wonder how the emotions are right now. Both of them have been speaking to Mark Guidi. Alan, Liam Fontaine back in the starting lineup today. Is that a boost for you? Yeah, it's a big boost, you know, uh, especially after last week. You know, we only had, you know, four fit defenders and the fact that we've got Liam Fifa today is, you know, is a big boost for everyone. Robbie, you've got Danny Wilson back in the side again today. How big a boost is that? Yeah, it's a huge boost for the team, you know, for uh, just the strength and the leadership that he brings. He's been fantastic all season and he's great to have him back. You know, we rested him last week to make sure he's OK for today and he's, he's managed to make it, so I'm pleased. We're at home, you know, and we'll be looking to, to give the fans a really positive uh, victory and send them on their way and let them enjoy the rest of the Sunday afternoon. Every game's different, you know, every uh, team's different, so it's going to be very difficult again today. It's always a, a hard place to come, you know, Hibs are in a good run of form, and we know that, and we know we have to be at our best to get something out of the game. It does seem like, Gordon, both of the managers are probably about the calmest men in here right now. Very measured in their approaches. Well, that, that, there is a point, um, when you get, you're nervous before the game as a manager, they're nervous, you probably never slept, both of them last night, you know, up and down watching all sorts of rubbish on telly. Think if I picked the right team, I've got to speak to him in the morning, which one do I speak to first, tell him he's dropped. 
And then when you get here, you go, you lose all that nervousness, you go, right, the game is on, I'm happy now. And there's a nice 20 minutes before, when you leave the dressing room after naming the team, there's that 20, 25 minutes, nice and calm. It's, it's that bit where you're kind of lost for a bit. And you don't actually mind talking to reporters at that stage, believe it or not. For a it's after the game, it's a problem. <laughs> But they are relaxing camp, and it looks like both teams are happy with the teams that have picked. Sorry, both managers are happy with the teams that have picked. So it just me that PA got a wee bit louder right now. Wind is, wind's blustery as well, it's swirling inside the stadium. You played for both teams, of course, and I, I read something interesting, a quote from you during the week, and you said when you played for Hearts in that dressing room, there was great belief the last few years, and for Hibs, it, it was the opposite. Why? Well, I, I, I think there's been a good few people who have tried to figure out why, and they've not, you know, they've not come up with the answers. I think it's something that's historical, it's built up over time. You go back to when you know John Robertson's time when it was 22 games unbeaten for Hearts and it just seems to have been you know carried on over the years and you know when I when I was playing for Hearts, it's not just the players, it's the fans, it's the club, everybody connected has a confidence that they can you know win, no matter what the results have been like previous. Whereas at Hibs there's just the nervousness about the supporters and it just permeates right through and the, the players and the management as well at times. At times as well, I've got to stress that there was a lot of strong characters in that Hibs team. Guys like Scott Brown, Stephen Whitaker, Kevin Thompson, a lot of good players, but there just was a certain nervousness in these games. Hibs certainly want to turn the tide today, that is for sure. Almost set to go, almost ready for kickoff. A few nerves, it seems, around me in the stadium as well here. Pressure gauge is rising. It's the Edinburgh Diet Derby live at BT Sport, and it's coming up next. Three, four, Edison Hybees, get in there! Come on, the high bees! Come on, the high Come on, Come on, the high bees! Come on, the hearts! Come on, the high bees! Come on, the jump tarts! Come on, the high bees! Hey! 